Good evening and welcome to the Mirror of the World. I want to say thank you for joining today. My name is Buki Adeoshun and I'm your regular host on this program. I'm excited to bring you the word of the Lord today. Before we start, I would like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you, Lord. You are a good God. Lord, I ask you that the entrance of your word today will bring light. Show us, Lord, what you want us to see in your word. Write your word in our hearts, Lord. Lord, help us to know you more. Whatever we see in your word today, let our lives be transformed into it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Today, uh, we are going to get understanding and we're going to be saying some things purely from God's world perspective. You know, one of the things I found out is that uh, the more I read the Bible, the more I ask certain questions, the more I question some of the things we do and why we do them. Uh, I try to understand, you know, uh, one of the challenges, uh, I, mean, I mean, the challenge that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ have with the Pharisees. And I was just wondering, why is it so? Um, you know, the difficulty that Paul the Apostle had with the Pharisees, the same set of people, and what, why is he so? You know, the more we read the Bible, the more understanding we get, and then we actually see that God is a good God. And then uh, we see that God is a righteous God. He does right things. And then we also know that God is a God that executes judgment. So we have been reading the book of Psalm, Psalm 119. It's been a wonderful chapter in the Bible. Uh, let me do a little recap in terms of some of the things we have said. We said when you need counseling, you can actually go to the Bible uh, for counseling. You know, what I found out is that quite a lot of people, a lot of us, we queue up. And I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that is wrong. But, you know, um, why do you go and queue up for two hours to see a pastor? When you can't even spend two hours in the word uh two hours in the word of god with the help of the holy spirit we probably give you the counseling that your pastor will not give you and the thing really is sometimes for those of us who are bumping for counseling we probably need to go back there again you know there has to be a follow-up meeting so uh if you have the opportunity to have a quick chat with your pastor you're in a local assembly you know where you can talk to pastor you don't need to start filling forms you know, why don't you get into the word of God and begin to allow the Holy Spirit to cancel you? And let me tell you, sometimes uh, it is not all the cancers that are from God. Hey, my people, this is something we all have to know. When you read the book of Jeremiah chapter 2, God said there are a lot of people now who are prophesying, but they are not prophesying by him. They are prophesying by the spirit of Baal. You know they are prophesying you know by by um by by some evil spirit behind their prophecy but since you don't know how to hear god's word you won't even be able to tell you cannot discern so it's important for us that we get into the word of god i know quite a lot of people have said to me but pastor it's difficult for me to understand uh you know uh i don't know how i'm going to say it but if you pray and ask God to open your eyes, you know, take Ephesians chapter 1 and say, Lord, open my eyes of understanding so that I may see the truth in your word. If you say this prayer over and over again to yourself and you're genuine in your heart that you really want to know God's word, God has already given us the promise that he will write his laws in our heart. And then maybe one thing that you probably need to start doing is to start reading the bible not with a mindset as in you looking you know what we've been taught again is that you look through the scripture if you want healing you go and take all the healing scripture that's what we've been told we were not really told that actually you can read the bible to get wisdom you can read the bible to understand some things how to deal with affairs of life there are loads of things in the bible i mean the bible is the only book that i know that has a progressive revelation bible is the only i mean I haven't read so many books, uh, but at least I have a degree. You know, I have read books on business management, on philosophy, you know, sociology and things like that. But Bible is just stands out on its own. So maybe you read with a mindset to get wisdom, with a mindset to get understanding. 
and then of course with a mindset that as you read the word of god is going to build you up and you are going to get results through um the word of god so uh those are some of the things that we find out you know one other thing is he said verse 89 of 119 charlie i can never forget that uh, the, the holy spirit showed me a revelation and said uh, we used to say things like um god said it i believe it that said to say that's that's religion that's not scriptural uh, i know a lot of pastors have put, put you know they've put it that and and we've said that you know you know you know when you read the word of god you begin to challenge even some of the songs we've been singing and that's probably we've been singing those songs for years and nothing really happened you know and you're just wondering that people do don't even sing that song you know uh something else is happening in our life you know um i mean it's just it's just <laughs> um thank god for his protection thank god for keeping you but god did jesus didn't save us so that all the prayers that we will be praying all the time is uh lord um deliver us from evil uh lord protect us no 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 he, he saved us so that we can serve him is saved also that we can i mean actually primarily john 17 said you know he came to give us eternal life and eternal life is knowing him so the most important thing and when we read that in book in the book of jeremiah which is now one of my foundation scripture is i said we need to know god number one uh who who is a loving uh, loving kindness how did they put it now i'm trying to get the scripture right uh, who exercise loving kindness we need to know god as god who executes judgment we need to know god as a righteous god the one who we always do the right thing you know so he said these are the things that the lord delights in and jesus christ said i came that you may have eternal life and that you have it abundantly you know and the eternal eternal life is actually knowing god so uh, when we read the word of god we begin to get all this understanding so one that i was going to share was i said forever O lord your word is set to in heaven and um <laughs> and the, the holy spirit was just telling me something he said god doesn't just release his word like that that we need to start treating the word of the lord we need to start giving it the respect that he, 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 um it deserves so isaiah 55 says that he says so are my words he said when i send them they accomplish whatever i send them to do they don't return back to me voice so actually when we now take those two scriptures together he said so shall my world be he said when i send them they don't return to me back so that means that uh, psalm 119 verse 89 says forever O lord thank you lord your word is settled in heaven so that means that the word of the lord comes from heaven and then the oh wow wow this is amazing this is a uh, look at this revelation look at this revelation thank you lord okay so forever oh lord your word is settled in heaven and isaiah chapter 55 says so shall my word be it shall not return to me void so that means all the word of god are kept in heaven so the word of God are kept in a place where it cannot be corrupted. And then when God releases his words on earth, you know, God, another scripture now even says, so God watches over his word to perform it. So that means that when you get a word from the Lord, so you can tie that up John chapter, John chapter six, I believe, where Jesus Christ, the word that I speak to you, they are from the spirit. Okay. So that means that when you get a word and don't forget, jesus said that the holy spirit will take from me and then he will give it to you what's the holy spirit going to take from jesus and give to you the holy spirit doesn't distribute money he doesn't distribute car he doesn't no 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 that's not what he does uh, he said he will remind you of everything that i have said to you so the only thing the holy spirit is going to take from jesus from father from jesus and give to us is his word so he now says, oh lord this this is this is i'm telling you this is amazing this is amazing so now look at the progression now so all the words of god are kept in heaven actually another i mean lord wow wow this is this is just wonderful look at another scripture hebrews chapter uh hebrews chapter one i believe now i say he uphold all things by the power of his command so 
The words that are on earth, the words that God has released to uphold things. That's why the skies are not falling down. That's why the sun is not coming down. No matter what the scientists say, God has released a word. God released a word to keep them in place. So there are other words in heaven. So one scripture say he sent his word and he healed them or delivered them or saved them, you know, from the uh from uh from from uh the iniquities or from their sin or you know, uh he saved them, he sent his word, he sent his word. Look at it again, you know. We read another account where he said that you know that uh, I think it was Jairus or somebody came to Jesus and said, "Look, I'm not worthy for you to come to your house. Only just speak a word." Now, all starting from Psalm 119 verse 89, "Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven." So, whether you believe the word of God or not, the word of God is settled in heaven. So, uh, so when you say things like, uh, um, "God said it." I believe he does said to it. No, no, no. It's a song you can sing like the song of the world, but that's not the scripture. God said it, that settled it. Because the word of God is settled in heaven. The moment the word of God is released, that's why what you need to watch out for, what you need in your life is just the word of God. I think the, the problem we have is that I'm trusting God for the grace and for the anointing for people to actually begin to see the scripture, to begin to see the Bible in a totally different perspective that you can get education from the Bible. You can get enlightenment. You can get wisdom. You know, you will know things. You understand why certain things are done. So I think I've done more than <laughs> what I should do on the recap. So let's get into Psalm 119. And the Lord is going to show us something from one verse of the scripture. So let's read Psalm 119. And uh, we are going to be reading from uh, verse 113. So uh, if you want to follow me, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. And then we're going to read right to, to verse 144. Let's go. Um, I hate vain thoughts, but thy Lord do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evil doers, for I will keep the commandments of God. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I shall be saved, and I will have respect unto thy, unto thy status continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy status, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love thy testimony. My flesh tremble for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to my oppressors be sure for thy servant for good let not the proud oppress me my eyes fill for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness deal with your servant according to your mercy and teach me your status i am thy servant give me understanding that i may know thy testimony it is time for thee lord to walk for they have made void thy law therefore i love your commandments above gold yea above fine gold therefore i esteem all thy precept concerning all things to be right and i hate every false way thy testimony are wonderful therefore does my soul keep them the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding unto the simple i open my mouth and panted for i long for your commandments look thou upon me and be merciful unto me and thou as thou used to do unto those that love your name order my step in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precept. Make thy face to shine upon your servant and teach your status. Rivers of water runs down my eyes because they keep not thy law. Righteous are thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgment. Thy testimony that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My seal has consumed me because my eyes have forgotten thy word. Thy word is very pure, therefore the, thy servant love it. I am small and despised, yet do I not forget thy precept. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delight. The righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall, I shall live. Praise the Lord. Um, thank, thank God for this revelation. 
that we have in his word i just want to speak to just one thing and uh, we found that in verse um, 130 verse 130 he says the entrance of your word gives light and um he said that um actually let's let's go and read that let's go and read that again and quote it correctly because i'm a man that like to look into the word so let me read one translation of the bible easy to reset as people understand your word it brings light to their lives you know we we don't when it comes to the word of god we don't need to begin to pastors have got no business with doing life application lessons i'm very sorry to this i'm going to be honest with you because there's just enough in the word of god that uh, we can look at and we can teach people and it will help them with the way they live their life um the word of god will tell you to have courtesy for people I don't go and read some, you know, I thank God for five long love languages and things like that. But if we do what the word of God says about honoring one another, about respecting one another, uh, uh, we won't be talking about five love languages and things like that. Why, why are we reading the book of the world and then bringing it into the church and living our life based on that? No. Um, uh, uh, there's a simple word that says something like uh, can the cause you know uh, uh what's what's this word i'm trying to look for the word now he said uh who shall lay his hand on the oh lord help me i say who shall lay his, his hand on something without first counting the, the cost that's risk management is, is it because it's not called risk management in the bible <laughs> that's why that's that's why we couldn't do we don't call it risk management he said you count your cost, you know, uh, you look at it, you analyze. So there's a lot of wisdom in God's soul. So he says here that as people understand your word, the key thing here is that they understand God's word. Jesus Christ said that, you know, their hearts are hardened. He said they hear the word of God, they do not understand. And when you don't understand God's word, there cannot be healing, you know. Um, healing comes when you understand the word of God. That's why our roles for those of us who are pastors who are watching is is to trust god to help us to explain god's word to people in such a way that they will understand it and then you know it will bring light to their lives so it, it will bring them closer to god it will make them to want to read god's word it will make them to want to do it on our own and we shouldn't just we're not supposed to be magicians and we begin to do some special type of performance and make make ourselves idol you know everybody is saying yes sir uh, daddy mommy uh, yes sir yes sir. i mean come on they're not your children why are they calling you daddy why are they calling you mommy well that's not why we're on the air today so uh, let's quickly look at some things right there in that scripture uh, you know some things that he said the entrance of god's word brings light um if you can want to look at it you say revelation you can't really do anything meaningful when you can't see when you don't understand what the problem is you know you cannot treat the problem most of us most times when we have a problem what we are looking for is a solution and i say this to people many times once there's a problem don't look for a solution look for a word try and try to understand what the issue is if you go to the hospital especially in the developed country and i'm not talking about you go to hospital in africa where they are treating what they haven't agonized you know the first thing they're going to do is they're going to run series of tests you know so to understand you take your car to the mechanic you don't start doing uh, some guesses let's remove the plug let's do this let's do that no uh you put in a diagnostic equipment you will give you some codes you know i'm telling you because i know uh, it will read the code it code for you when your check engine light is on something is responsible for the engine management light coming up it doesn't mean there is no oil in your in your car it will run a proper diagnosis on it and then they will do a code they will go to the manufacturer and tell you this is the problem with the car the bible is the same when you understand the word of god you know it will uh it will help you it will provide some light it will help us in the way we live our life let's look at some examples um 
when you read the word of God, it will, it will reveal the motive why we are doing things. You know, most often times when I check the scriptures and I study the way, especially Africans, we have been encouraged to give and the way we give. And I check in the scripture when people gave and how they give. You know, I saw that the people, as it was recorded in the Bible, I saw that they, they got different results as opposed to the result that we're getting today. So I'll give you one example. A lot of pastors, a lot of people, they've, teach, they've taught us and they said, um, you give your last meal. Uh, talking about the story of the widow of Sarivar. A lot of people didn't know that when I shared this with some people, they were like, oh, wow, their wives are, wow. So the widow of Sarifah, do you know, sir, man, do you know that uh, God told the widow before he told the man of God that, look, you are going to sustain this man. You are going to uh, feed this man for what from what you have. And when you look at the word that God spoke to Elijah, he said, for I have commanded a widow to sustain you. The word commanded means the woman didn't want to do it. So God spoke to her before the man of god came and that's the pattern in the bible there are so many people who gave offering in the bible there were no record that the pastor told them or the prophet some of them didn't for example a lot of people have limited the basis of their tithe into the old testament the law that's not true uh and actually when the bible is referring to the law you know you have to understand that you know the whole what is called the Pentateuch today in terms of starting from the book of genesis you know, um, the first five book of Moses is called, I think, right up onto Joshua. You know, there were things that were given to Moses. So when you are reading that, you have to read it together as a whole. You don't just uh, you don't just read uh, the law and say, oh, I'm going to start. No, no, no. You have to start from Genesis from the beginning in terms. And then even in the book of Genesis in itself, there are certain things that Moses did not recall that we will find out in the New Testament, you know, later on or some other prophets they give us. A clue in terms of you know what's in the mind of God when he says certain things to Moses so the word of God will reveal the purpose what exactly is in your mind Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 I just want to put up that scripture and I want to show you something there God's word will tell us why you are doing what you are doing God's word will tell you why you are doing what you are doing okay so um are you honoring or you are respecting your husband because you know that you you depending on him you know or are you working in your place because you know if you don't do it um they're not going to pay you at the end of the month or you are working to make an impact it, 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 two different things so he say he say for whatever god says to us is full of living power it is sharper than the sharpest dagger cutting sweet swift and uh, and deep into our innermost thoughts and desire with all their parts exposing us for what we really are that's a key point there i know we quote that scripture all the time but we don't see that part so the word of god will tell you the reason why you are doing things it will re it will reveal what is in your mind and and you know we were having a bible study and um we we're having a bible study and uh, i think we, were, we read john chapter 9 I want to encourage you to join every Friday. We do online interactive is interdenominational, so you are more than welcome to join. And we found out that you know Jesus Christ healed a man that was born right from the time he was born blind. And even the parents, you know, because of the fear of the Pharisees, even the parents they were not excited. So when they asked the parents, I said, "This is your son. Um, you know, can you tell us? You know, he, the, your son can now see. Can you tell us?" The parents was like, look, our son is old enough. Ask him. He will tell you, you know, yeah, what happened to him. They were not they were not happy for the man. I thought if somebody was born blind and then we see miracle, we see things happening in his life, we will be excited, we will be happy for them, we rejoice for them. A lot of us, we claim that we love people, but actually when we see good things happening in our life, even ordinary common like on Facebook, you can't even do it for them, you know, on YouTube. I mean, we just pretend to love people. But when you read God's word, God's word will tell you what is in your mind because God's word will tell it as it is. There are no sentiments attached to it at all. So if you want to tell a story to bring somebody down, you know, even if you are telling the story in a compelling way, in such a way that we listen to you, we can check God's word and we can balance your story with some things in the Bible that look, you're just whipping up emotions. You are whipping up sentiments. I mean, that's not to say whatever the people have done. Is right, but God's word will tell us your real motive. Are you telling your story 
to damage people? Are you telling your story to um or are you rebuking them to damage them or you rebuking them because genuinely you love them and then you want them to change? Now, so God's word will reveal who we really are. It will tell tell you why people. I mean, and I look at the Pharisees also. Their concern really was that uh, they were not even happy for the man. Uh, and then the conversation ends. You can read it in John chapter nine. They said, and then the man said, uh, "Do you want to be his follower?" So they say, "No, we don't want to be his follower. Uh, we are followers of Moses." Okay, where did Moses come from? You know, this man told you that I'm from God. I mean, not this man. Our Lord said, "I'm from God." They say, oh, we are from Moses. We are not one of his disciples. He tells you what's in their mind. They love control. Um, the parents who were not happy for the man that was healed, you know, the man was born blind. I don't know for how many years. You know, the parents should be excited. They were afraid because of the fear of the Pharisees. The Bible says that so that they will not put them out of the temple. I suspect that those the parents must be, you know, like my wife said, my wife said, Maybe they have been making money off the guy. You know, you know, they were putting up there to go and beg for arms and they were collecting money. Maybe they will make money and they won't even spend it the money on the on on the on the <laughs> on the guy. Those of you living in the United Kingdom, you collect benefit from here, left and center. And then you go to church and you dance on Sunday. God is watching you. The the the, the law will soon catch up on you. You there, there are no hidden places. It's, it's right time for you to repent. Stop collecting benefits from children that you didn't have. You know, that, that's true. I'm going to tell it as it is. That's the assignment God has given me. So God's word will reveal who you really are. Now, let's look at another, another thing because it says the entrance of God's word brings light. That's what we are considering. That's what we are looking at. You know, it gives you understanding. It helps you to know uh, who you really are. It makes even simple people wise. Now, Let's look at another thing that the Word of God is going to do. The Word of God will explain to us why certain things has to be done in a way. Let me give you an example. When you read 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, uh, actually, let me see if I can pull that scripture up. It says that when we fellowship with one another, when we gather in a place and we fellowship with one another, it said that our fellowship, even though we are fellowshipping with one another, that our fellowship is with the Father. Can you see that? First John 1 3 said that which we have seen and heard and declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. So if I'm inviting you to come and fellowship with us either online by the way we are having our first uh in the ministry our first men breakfast fellowship. So why did it take you so long time? Well that's that's when God wants us to do it and we're doing it. So he said but truly our fellowship is with the Father. Now let's look at this. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father. Jesus Christ said, Where two or three of you are gathered together in my name, there will I be in their midst. Now, when you are going to church, or when you even gather together at your house to pray, or when you have a, a choir, a riaza, or any kind of meeting, it's a fellowship. You are fellowshipping with your brethren. When we're in any gathering, we are fellowshipping with our brethren. Okay, so do you have that mindset that God is there? Uh, if the scripture says that, you know, he said, he said that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And then he went on to say, and truly, can you say that? Even though you are having fellowship with us, he said, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son. So if you know that when we come together as believers, when we are in church, our fellowship is with the Father, okay? So I know the little I know is that people dress in a in a particular way. Now let me let me read it the way I put it down in my note. Um, people behave differently in front of people they respect. So if you know that your fellowship is with the father, so for example, when the CEO is attending a meeting, we don't come late. We dress very well. Uh, we're careful in terms of what we say in the presence of chief executive. Is it because we can see them? So when you have that understanding that God is going to be at that meeting, do you need somebody, do you need your husband to be shouting when you're about to go to church on Sunday? Do you need your parents to be telling you, can you come out, you know, and let's go. If if the CEO at your office, if the CEO, you are having a meeting the next day and the CEO is going to be there, you spend all night to prepare the presentation, what you are going, is going to rehearse before the CEO. The CEO that you're going to work for, after 30 years, that's that's if they keep you the 30 years and they're going to sack you and they're going to tell you to retire and go and put another person. 
because you are no longer useful for the organization and they've made some good money of you and then you are left with a retirement benefit can, that cannot even sustain you. You, you. you understand what I'm saying? And God, because you can't see him, the one who holds your breath, the one who can keep you alive, the one that is not only that is going to keep you alive when you are dead, if physically you drop this body, you have an answer to give. You are going to face him. You are going to explain what you use with your time. Now, when you are going into his presence, you are fellowshipping with another brother. We have to tell you not to reveal your cleavage, okay? We have to tell you that, look, this shirt, this this skirt you're wearing is too short. But when you are going to Buckingham Palace to see Her Majesty the Queen, or you want to go and see the president of the country, you put in your best attire. But when it comes to the house of God, you can just wear anything you like. You know what? Well, you can just bounce in like that. No. The scriptures say our fellowship is with him. Uh, when you go there and you go there, you go there promptly. You are not late. You organize the house of God. You are walking without understanding that your fellowship is not with the brethren that they are there. Your fellowship is with the father. So that's one thing. The other thing is that I don't have time to be able to dwell on this. Um, do you know that the real purpose of marriage is not so man and woman can enjoy this? Look, I'm going to slaughter some religious cow. And uh, let's go into the scripture. I'm, re I'm really ready. You know, God told me, he said, look, uh, this message that I have given you, they are going to fight you. There's going to be fighting in-house and from house. And I'm ready. And he said, but look, I will protect you. You go, you have to speak my word. I can sense that anointing. Is, is, I can sense the Jeremiah anointing on, on me. You know, God is raised, has raised me up for such a time like this to tell the truth as it is. Um, uh, you, 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 for you to understand the purpose of marriage, you have to read the, the, the book of Genesis and you have to read what Jesus says. Now, let me just drop this in because of our time. Uh, so they came to Jesus that they said, look, one man died and then he married another man because in their law, you know, you have to marry the wife of your brother or something like that. So my brother went to be with the law last year. Now by the law, you know, I have to marry my brother. So I go for be bad thing. I'm never going to do that kind of a thing. Uh, the woman is free to do whatever she wants to do god bless she's a very good woman okay so that's their law and then they said the second person died and then so the sadist was it i don't know the pharisee or whoever came to him this time around and then he said something to them i mean he's he's, in, he's interesting go and read matthew chapter 22 verses 25 to 31 he said something they said ye do err not knowing the scripture nor the power of god and that's 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 the way most of us are what we have been reading is tradition. You know, they said that when somebody died, ah, I don't know how I'm going to translate this in, in English. God help me. The tradition in our place from Nigeria is that when you when somebody died, especially you are a woman, you have to stay at home. You are, okay, you have to mourn your husband for a whole year. And I asked a simple question. Um, and then ceremonially they said they are coming out, you know. They call it one name. I don't know what name they call it. And you put the woman under bondage in some culture. They subject the woman to different kind of tortures. Nonsense. Pure nonsense. And those things are even encouraging the church of God. And the woman we go to work, the woman we go, they say, oh, but yes, at the end of one year, we are doing this ceremony. What kind of ceremony is that that you are doing? Where is that in the scripture? Why, why are we doing things like that? Anyway, let's leave that aside. So Jesus Christ said to them, say, for in the resurrection, they neither marry no are giving in marriage so uh let's stop deceiving ourselves you went and you you have a grave and you say oh they are husband and wife i'm going to bury my father there and on top of it i'm going to put my money on my, my mother there D jesus christ said look on the day of resurrection that's even if you believe in resurrection he said that he said that they are neither married can you see that no, I giving in marriage. So those of those people that have come back with some things that are, are they've been to heaven and in the heaven they recognize themselves as a husband and wife is a lie. It's not in line with this scripture. So there are some so, some some revelations that when some people come, it it, it, it just makes perfect sense that you, look when you go to heaven and you see Jesus Christ, there's just so much that your human human mind can comprehend so we understand when you come back and you are telling us some story and you add a little bit to it you tell it in your own way the way you understand it that doesn't mean we can read the scripture okay so i'm just i'm just trying to tell some people that look we are ready we are ready for this thing to read the scripture and and see what the scripture says and tell it as it is and we're going to read as many scripture as possible so that 
our doctrine is not founded on just one scripture. We're going to trust the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit is going to teach us. So he said, for in resurrection, Matthew, I'm reading it, go and read it, verse 22. He said, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. So another example is that he said, they come up with all sorts of things and said, oh, uh, and he said, oh, why then did Moses uh, uh, command giving a writing of divorcement, you know? And to put eye away. And Jesus caught him quickly. He said, look, no. Uh, God didn't do that. God didn't put the process in place. He said, Moses. He didn't say God. Jesus said, Moses. Because of the hardness of your heart. So, Moses knew that, look. God, this thing you are talking about. You showed me in the beginning. That they were one in the beginning. The real purpose of marriage is unity. God brought man and woman together. So that they can be united in doing his work. The real purpose of marriage is not so that you can, uh, people say for, procre pro for procreation, you know, to have children. Yes, but that's not, not children in that sense. It's to have godly seed. Go and start the scripture very well. So there's no point you having five children and they are not godly seed. No, that's not God's intention. And to raise a godly seed, I'm telling you, is hard work. To raise just one child up in the way of the Lord is hard work. And that's why you have Anna have how many children? Do you think Samuel is the only child that Hannah had? He, she has so many other children. But we only know of Samuel. So God is looking for godly seed. People who are going to do exploit for him. So he said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart. So because God knew. I mean, Moses told God and said, look, this is your people that you are giving me. Uh, their heart is very hard and they won't listen. <laughs> Uh, talking about his experience from the mountain of Sinai when he went and received the Ten Commandments and then he came back and saw the people. He said, look, with everything that God did for you, look at the way you are behaving. What kind of generation of people are you? So Moses said, look, i got to do something so they won't kill the woman. So that's why if you are in a relationship, you are in a relationship, you are in a marriage where you are being abused, especially, uh, even I will probably say now, abuse, uh, what's it called, um, physically, you know, but now, mental health is even a serious thing. So when you are in a relationship, whether you're a man or a woman, because it's not just men abusing women. There are some women that are terrible. They, they abuse men. There are some men that are terrible. They abuse men. Look, I'm going to please ask you. I'm not asking you to divorce, okay? I'm just telling you, if the heart of someone, one of you, is hurting, and you've prayed, you've done everything possible so that the person will not kill you, in your own interest. I'm not saying I'm speaking as from the flesh now. Not as from the spirit of the Lord. But there's some wisdom in what I'm saying. I'm saying that you just walk away. Keep your sanity. Do some things that will make you not to run mad. Okay? Don't allow the man to hit you. If the very first time the man, uh, out of his anger, he kind of flings some chairs on you, you know, and you, you escape. And the second time he picked a plate and, you know, threw the plate at you. The third time, it might be a knife and you may not be lucky. Okay, so I'm just saying that the reason <laughs> God allowed that and you you find out in the Bible where people have divorced, God didn't kill them uh, because sometimes, you know, God look at some situation and God just look at it and say, look, <laughs> look, I'm not going to allow these people to kill themselves. Anyway, so we need to understand the purpose of marriage. So when we rise up in the resurrection, we are not husband and wife. That's what Jesus, those are not my words. So. You can't say I'm, I'm preaching heresies. No, and I'm not being blasphemous. Yes. That's the go and read in Matthew chapter 22. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So when we have this understanding, the way we begin to relate with one another in marriage is going to be different. Because now we will not say, okay, so why did God bring the two of us together? It, we will now begin to search the scripture. We will now begin to find out that purpose. You know, we will now begin to understand that, oh, actually, there is more to it. It's not just because of sex. Uh, it's not just so that we can raise up our children because children will only form like about one third part of your life. You know, uh, the one that doesn't leave your house quickly, maybe they are 30. Let's say you live up to 90 years and your, your children, the time they come into your life, the first part of your life, Let's even look at it. The first part of your life, uh, maybe we are 20 or if you don't get married early, you leave it by yourself. You live under the tutelage of your parents. 
the next phase of your life you live with your wife all the kids coming after sometimes the kids are gone that's when your eyes will be clear you went and you went and built a mansion so when all the kids were at home and i mean some of us are not sensible enough now we need to go to i mean i'm sorry to, i shouldn't use that word we need to be more sensible sensible you need to come to the developed world and see things you went and built a mansion and after you build the mansion you couldn't keep up with the electricity bill you couldn't keep up with running generator to warm the house you now have to be sending for your children to contribute money i mean come on they are trying to start their life now if all the kids are back home and then we are saying um and so when they come back home i want them to keep their room i want them to have their room why can't they go and stay in the hotel yo but oh is it taboo no but they are only going to be in town for some few moments or for, for, for some few time you know so why do you want to keep a room why can't you rent the room out to someone why can't you invite somebody in do some partitioning break it down and give somebody to rent and let them be a blessing you know you don't need to be calling your children to come and be building your grandfather's house or to come and be maintaining it so it, we we need to when we read the word of god the word of god is going to change our perspective our, our perspective yes that's the, the that's the word the way we do things why why you why are you buying a land uh, you, you you acquire the property and say I, I at my house i have many cars and then the, but for my kids they're not even interested they are not keen because they they travel on the bus most of the time you know they go on the train so there is no need for it so why are we buying things where we are say we are keeping them for our children okay all i'm saying is that the word of god the entrance of God's word will bring understanding. All of this video is good. I'm going to listen to it myself. Finally, God's word makes even simple people wise. Uh, uh, the word of God is full of wisdom. The wisdom is not the wisdom of this world, but it is the wisdom that will impact this world positively. The wisdom from God, we were told, is pure, according to the book of James. And God's word is not just written word. And this is this is something that we need to pay attention to. The word of God is not just written word. The word of God is both what is called the written word, which is, which is logo, and then the rhema word. So that's why when you read the letter of the word, for you to understand. So when you take this scripture, Psalm 119, verses 130, the entrance of God's word, it brings light. You may not fully understand what that means. And then when you think about it, you say, oh, hang on a minute. Uh, if I receive God's word, God's word is going to help me to understand how I live my life. God's word is going to help me to be able to uh, understand how things are done in such certain way. So, for example, I am someone who loves to challenge tradition because I, I, I believe uh, people were living in a particular way. I, I want to know, you don't just tell me to do things anyhow. I want to know why you want me to do it, you know. And, and let's be clear on what the outcome is. and. And let's kind of just say, okay, fine. Is this what you are trying to do? Uh, so, so, oh Lord, have mercy on me. I actually haven't got, haven't got enough time to talk about this. Um, uh, I was just talking with my 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 brother in love, and we were talking about it. You know, in some organization, they tell you after some time and say, oh, actually, uh, you are not allowed to work flexibly. You can't work from home. And then all of a sudden, they started facing facing financial pressure, and then they. It's downsize and they say, okay, we're going to move our office. We are going to move to a smaller office now. And all of a sudden, what happened? They're encouraging staff to work from home. Can you see that? So at a particular point in time, you know, they were telling you can't work from home now. Some people have done some research and say, actually, when you help people to um uh, to have a work-life balance, you know, where a lot of them want to do school run, you know, if they work from home, they're able to do that. You are able to get highly skilled people, people who are going to add value to your organization. So it's all about productivity, not about actually marking time and marking people and seeing whether they are working or somebody like myself. I, I don't just work when I'm in the office, you know, because what I do is design. It requires a lot of thinking. So sometimes on my way to work, I haven't signed off physically on my laptop be working. But I'm already thinking about work. Sometimes I'm in the bathroom, I'm getting inspiration. I'm getting an idea. You know, how do you recall? How do you log that? But well, that is going to benefit the organization. So all I'm trying to say is that we need to understand why certain things are done in certain way. Why are we doing it? So so that if we understand why things are done in a way, we will be able to do it better. So God's word will make even simple people wise. So 
Jesus said in John 6, 63, he said that it is the spirit that gives life. The body is of no value for that. He said, but the things I have told you are from the spirit. They give life. So he said the word of God, he makes the simple life. Uh, it makes the simple wise. So uh, the word of God can make you a wise person. And I'm not just talking about you quoting the scripture. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Bible says concerning Daniel in Daniel chapter 1, I believe verse 20 now, where he say in all matters of wisdom and everything that they requested of them, Daniel was found to be 10 times better. I think it's somewhere in the book of Daniel there. The Bible says and God gave Daniel wisdom and understanding in science and things like that. So when you get a word from God, a word to solve a problem, it makes you a wise person and of course when you are full of wisdom people are ready to li uh, they are ready to listen to you one of the things that must distinguish us as christian we must be solution providers we must be people that can because the spirit of excellence is in us the spirit of wisdom is in us we must be people that people come to and say okay what shall we do now don't don't just you know i, I don't have any problem with people criticizing stuff what i have problem is with okay after the criticism what are you going to do about it how many solutions have you offered you know if you are someone who is supportive you are always willing to help you know so you you go into a gathering i don't like the way they arrange these chairs okay and then you finish the meeting then you put the chairs you don't even put the chair where you met it you brought the chair out from one room and then you just left it there and you walk away and then you say Oh, they could have organized it better this way. No, don't tell us they could have organized it better than this way. Do it. Okay? Stop complaining. Just do it. Uh, 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 say what's your mind through action and show us. And people will come in and say, oh, wow, I never thought about this. Don't just sit somewhere and say, ah, uh, if they can do it. No, no, that's not what we are talking about. So uh, the wisdom from God, when God will give you an idea and say, okay, fine, look at what they are trying to do. Why? Uh, why don't you tell them to do it this way? And they were like, wow, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. You know, wow. You know, that's what we are talking about. The word of God. You are a simple person that may not even have the right qualifications or you know, whatever it is. The wisdom of God will lift you up. The wisdom of God will promote you. I hope you have learned something from this video and you've learned enough to want to share with your friends so i want to encourage you you know that somebody is going to be set free through this uh the truth that is from the word of god today please help me share from video we're making some adjustment um i don't know how it's going to be but the lord has instructed me to come off facebook so uh it's been on my mind for some time but i've received a clear direction in terms of some things that god is doing in my life so um, most likely we're going to be live on Twitter. Definitely you, YouTube. I know we're going to be live on YouTube or Facebook. I'm not going to be posting comments. I'm not going to be posting things that I used to again. I'm not going to be commenting on videos. So if you write me or I'm actually going to delete Facebook from all my phones. So I've already done one. So the deadline is January 31st. Uh, of this year if the lord asks me to come back i will come back i mean it's not me it, whatever he tells me to do but hey I, I learned something from apostle paul he wanted to go to asia to go and preach you know but god told him and said no uh the spirit of god forbade him and said i want you to go to uh what's it called macedonia because there's a man there that needs help i'm not saying god told me that they need, they need help on twitter and youtube but you know god just said you know um scale down your activity on facebook and that's it i didn't hear an audible voice <laughs> okay it wasn't a loud voice <laughs> oh my son get off facebook no it was just a witness in my spirit and i just know that yes i know how god talks to me let's pray for those who are sick father in the name of jesus thank you for every single person that is sick lord they have been trying to find out ah thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus the lord said the problem with your health is what you are eating. The problem is your health. With your health is what you are eating. And uh, you, I, I just had this word, dietary requirements. That's what I had in my spirit. Lord, I thank you. I pray for wisdom for the medical team. I ask that, Lord, you will 
open the eyes of people who are watching me right now to watch what they are eating lord what they need to include in their meal and what they need to take out so that they might have sound health lord i pray that you will open their eyes to see it in the mighty name of jesus lord it may even be that they will just uh, do it by accident and they just find out that oh since i stopped eating this thing it, 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 my health has improved lord bring about this wisdom in their life give them this wisdom in jesus name thank you for as many as you were going to heal today and you have healed already lord i give you praise for it i bless your name in jesus name amen quickly before i go i want to give someone the opportunity to become born again i want you to make jesus christ your lord and savior you know uh the bible says i said there's only one mediator between man and god first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 i said there's only one god actually some people won't like me to say that you know that there's only one god but that's what the bible says we have to say it <laughs> i don't mean to be rude um but the scripture says that there's only one god and there's one mediator between god and man i'm not saying what to make you unhappy that's what the scripture says there's only one mediator between god and man and that's the man jesus christ he even call him say that's the man jesus christ so i want you to accept him as your lord and savior friends there's a lot of things happening in the realm of the spirit that we don't know we are actually on uh, uh, what's the word Just changing our life the realm of the spirit cons con uh, control the realm of the physical you don't don't be a spectator no, no 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 don't let some people just pull you in the stadium and then they are playing the game you know you know <laughs> to the instruction of their master and then you are there clapping you know you spend the whole of your time and your money no don't be a spectator in this in this life you can be a player uh you can be an active participant that's why i'm inviting you to accept jesus when you accept jesus christ into your life you begin to transact in the in the realms of the spirit i'm not talking about voodoo things and i'm not talking about you know all those things we've been talking in africa and then you'll be you know some people are just uh, they perform like magician no that's not what i'm saying i'm talking about you having access to the supernatural i'm talking about you receiving the wisdom of god wisdom how to deal with the affairs of life i'm talking about you getting inside i'm talking about you having the opportunity to talk to god about things you know that privilege of calling him your father that's what i'm inviting you to i'm not even inviting you to come to church but like i say to people there's no way you will have an encounter with um god and you won't go to church because the church is not just a place where you go to receive blessing you go to a church for an assignment you go to a church to minister to your fellow brethren you go to a church with a word in your mouth that is going to encourage someone that is going to lift them up you know so so you don't go to a church with a mindset that they're going to take my money no yeah um if your problem is uh, when you go to church they take your money come to our church we don't ask people for money if you want to give give if you don't want to give bless your heart we know as you receive the word of the lord one thing that i'm sure of is that if god is finding it very hard to make you to be a blessing to other people um you know they don't spend dollars in heaven they don't send, spend pounds in heaven it will be difficult for people to direct people's heart to give to you but that's not the reason why we get saved we get saved so that we can know god so if you want to give your life to jesus christ if you are tired of people are you not tired of people telling you about who god is they will ask you to sow seed you went to the sea to go and bath um somebody somebody just need need to listen to that uh they've given you a seven step to success you but in your heart you say i've tried all these things and yet still nothing seems to be happening it's time for you to come to jesus for him to know the master himself so if you want to do that i want you to say this prayers after me say lord jesus I confess that i'm a sinner i repent of my sins today I believe you die for me so i can have eternal life i ask you to come into my heart be my lord and savior in jesus name thank you so much for saying that prayer i want you to do one more thing uh please get in touch with us we're going to send you some materials that is going to help you grow spiritually the most important things i mean some of the materials are not our materials they are kind of copeland materials these are people we we trust that they have the wisdom of god they've written books we use their book bible study at our church we are going to give you those books free of charge yes we bought the book from them 
we're going to give it to you free of charge because we are committed to your spiritual development. The most important thing to us is that we want you to know God. That's what we have to know other thing. We don't want anybody to tell you about who God is. We want you to experience God. We want you to know God for who God is. So if you get in touch with us, um, we'll send the books. We have a series of online programs. We want to invite you for our men's uh, breakfast meeting, 3rd of August. I won't, I'll be looking forward to seeing you at Luton. So uh, if, if you want to be part of it, email us at 10 o'clock in the morning. We're going to be having a wonderful time in the presence of God. The God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together as spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our Master Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do have a wonderful week. God bless you and bye.